So let's look at a u substitution and definite integral problem. Um, this is a question I get, in fact, uh, quite regularly. I was emailing someone yesterday back and forth about it. Um, and the question is, you know, the, the, I always you know, get is, Patrick, when do I have to change those limits of integration? Well, um, basically always. Um, so let me show you sort of the correct way uh, to do this problem at random. So I'm sure you've seen it. We'll go through it uh, relatively quickly. And I'll point out the, the issues and I think the common problems people run into. So if we're integrating from 1 to 2 of 2x over the square root of x squared plus 1 dx, uh, the correct way, you know, to get started I would do a u substitution. Let u equal x squared plus 1. du is going to be 2x dx. So we'll come back to the limits of integration in just a second. So in the bottom, we would have the square root of u. Again, that's what we're calling x squared plus 1. 2x dx would get replaced by du. So I'm just going to pull that off to the side and put a 1 there. And again, what you should do now is calculate new limits of integration. The upper limit of integration was when x equaled 2. So it says, well, then in that case, u would equal 2 squared plus 1, which would be 5. Um, the lower limit of integration, originally it was when x equals 1, so we would have 1 squared plus 1, which is 2. So this is absolutely perfectly correct. So we would integrate from 2 to 5. This is u to the 1 half. I would rewrite that as u to the negative 1 half. And if we integrate, um, we would get u to the 1 half. We would divide by 1 half, uh, which would be the same thing as multiplying by 2 over 1 from 2 to 5, and this is perfect, okay? No problems here. Um, if we plug it in, you could even pull the 2 out, and this is the same thing as square root of u from 2 to 5. If we plug in our limits of integration, we would have 2 times, well, the square root of 5 minus the square root of 2, and that's absolutely no problem. Another way that you could do this Okay, that would be perfectly valid. Okay, so that is the correct answer, whatever that simplifies. Well, it's really kind of simplified. You could plug in a calculator. Another perfectly valid thing to do is to, <clears throat> okay, well, you know, we got down to this point. We said it's 2 times the square root of u. Suppose we were lazy and we didn't figure out these new limits of integration. Suppose we didn't figure out the 5 and 2 by doing this step. So I say, eh, don't even do that. Um, so in a sense, I don't know what these numbers are. Okay. Well, what you can do is you can resubstitute in. So we said u was x squared plus 1. Okay, so you're back to the original variable, which was x. Now go back to the original limits of integration from 1 to 2. And if you plug that in, well, you would get 2 times uh, the square root of 2 squared plus 1, which would be 5. And then suppose we factor the 2 out minus, if you plug 1 in, you would get square root of 2, which is the exact same thing we got before. <clears throat> so the moral of the story, first off, all I want to say is... Um, if you use a new variable, right, because we started with x, we started with x, the first way I did it, I evaluated it all in terms of u, a new variable, it's somebody different. So new variable, we need to use new limits of integration. And that's it. That's what you need to remember, okay? Um, you know, likewise, if you convert it back into the original variable, Well, we started with x and we finished out with x. Then use the original limits. That's it. Okay, so that's all you have to do. So, in a sense, this is the way I used to do them. You know, I would do the u substitution, and then I would just leave this stuff off and leave this stuff off. And what I would actually do is put little question marks. And the question marks indicated to the professor, because I would usually I actually remember talking to them about it, I would say, hey, is it okay if I'm lazy and don't find them and just find them at the end? And they said yes. So I put little question marks just to indicate, hey, 
you know, I'm being lazy and not figuring them out just yet. So eventually I would get back to this step, and I would say, well, I don't know what they are. But then I would plug it back into the original variable, and then I would plug in uh, the original limits, and I would do it, and they would say perfect. I think uh, the big problem, and this is where when I taught, I would certainly take off points, and I'm sure when I was a student, I lost points for it. If you said, you know, the integral from 1 to 2 of 2x over the square root of x squared plus 1, so suppose you do your u substitution just like we did, x squared plus 1, 2x dx, uh, we had 1 over the square root of u. If you kept it 1 to 2, if you said that's true, I would definitely say no, that's not correct, okay? Um, it's not correct anymore. Because really, it would only be equal if the limits of integration were 2 and 5. So that's the thing you have to be careful of. New variable, new, use new limits of integration. Um, old variable, use the old limits of integration. That's it. Um, you know, eventually down the road, if you have to take, you know, uh, multivariable calculus, you're going to have, you know, sort of these triple integrals, for example, that have you know, limits of integration on them. And at that point, usually if you have to do substitutions and things, um, if you have to do substitutions and things to integrate, in general it's going to be easier to go ahead and figure out the new limits of integration as you go along. Okay, so that's why some professors are real picky and they want you to figure them out every time. Find the new limits of integration. That's why they're being picky about that, is because they know eventually down the road, that's the best way to do things. If you're like me, you may be, you know, a little lazy and not want to calculate them, and you'll say, well, why can't, you know, just leave me alone, this way works, which is true. But again, they're just kind of thinking down the road, and, you know, ultimately, what's the best way? So, um, that's it. That's all about uh, changing limits of integration. Um, technically, you don't have to as long as you switch back to the original variable. Again, the only place I would really take off points is if you do a substitution and keep the, the, uh, the same original limits of integration. Um, when I taught, I told students, I let them do my little question mark trick. I would say do a u-substitution, put little question marks, just to me to indicate that you realize, hey, they have in fact changed but we're too lazy to find them just yet. And just keep the question marks until the end, and then when you switch back to your original variable, as long as you're using the correct original limits, that would be perfect. So, all right, a very long-winded explanation about changing limits of integration, um, probably more than you wanted to hear. But again, as always, I hope it's helpful.